On this week's episode of Fishing 411, Mark and Jake Romanak have traveled to western New York to fish Lake Ontario and the famed Niagara Bar. A submerged section of the Niagara Escarpment, this fish holding structure may well be the most productive salmon fishing destination in the entire Great Lakes. Fishing the Niagara Bar is something every salmon fisherman should experience. The good old days of salmon fishing are here and now, this week on Fishing 411. We are hooked up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I got a feeling that might be silver. What do you think, Jake? It's looking a little silver, Dad. Woo, baby, I haven't had a chance to even take the bait clicker off yet. He's just a screaming. I love that sound in the morning. Love it. <laughs> How are we doing on speed, Jake? I can't get no headway on this guy. Uh, we're slowed down quite a bit. So. <laughs> okay. In other words, just. Take my time. We're way back in there by my leg quarters now. Ugh. Sooner or later, he'll start to tire and I'll be able to get some ground on him. <laughs> it's the name of the game. Got king salmon in the morning. Look how foggy it is this morning. Kind of took her time getting out here and we got salmon. We don't even hardly have all of our lines set yet. We got salmon flopping at the back of the boat. <laughs> He's not at the back of the boat. <laughs> He's in another time zone. <laughs> Holy smokes. Oh, this is so much fun. Cannot beat this kind of action in the springtime. What a way to start a fishing season. Yeah, baby. This fish is whooping me, Jake. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this kind of fun. And we're using a different presentation. It's not the first time we've ever used it, but we haven't had a lot of experience with this presentation. But it didn't take long to get bit this morning, and if we're lucky enough to get this fish in, we'll show you exactly what we're talking about here. I hate to take them in front of the downrigger wire, but we're gonna this time. <laughs> got him in his scoop. <laughs> it wasn't pretty, dead. We got him. <laughs> That's the thing about salmon. You know, you're supposed to land them in the back of the boat, but. I tell you what, you gotta take them where you gotta take them. I'm glad you got long arms, kid. Let's get this fish out of here and show him off. Welcome to Lake Ontario. <laughs> That's a great way to start any day of fishing right there, a great way. Got this fish on something called a spin fish. We're gonna show you what it's all about. It's a rotating plug and uh, boy, it did not take long. I don't think I had that, that downrigger down five minutes for our first fish. So that's a good litmus test right there. Holy smokes. 
Jakers, look at that hook, man. There's no way that fish is coming in. Yeah, coming undone. We owned him. Whew. Well, it's a little early to tell what's going to happen today, but uh, it's an encouraging sign that we caught a fish on a new presentation. It's called a spin fish. It's made by Yakima Bay, and it's a rotating plug. And what makes it unique is I can pull it apart here. You can see it has two pieces. You can fill it with scent. So we're stuffing this thing full of pro here, putting it back together put it in the water and it spins when you're pulling it. We're also fishing in a combination with a rotator to give it a little bit more rotation in the water. And right now we're putting them on downriggers. And like I said, it's too early to tell, uh, but five minutes in the water to get a bite on a spin fish, that's an encouraging thing. We'll see how the day plays out. This is another one on the spin fish. Oh baby. Sorry about that, Jake. Turned right at the perfect time, we're good. <laughs> I wish we could look from the outside and see what we're doing here. Yeah, it we looks crazy. <laughs> we're only fishing two presentations. We're fishing spoons on lead core line and we're fishing spin fish on downriggers and they're both firing regular. Uh, it's been really chaotic today. You look around, it's foggy. There's a lot of other boats out here. They can't see us, we can't see them. And all of a sudden, boom, out of the fog, they pop up. So everybody's fighting fish, everybody's having a good time, and we're trying to avoid bumper boats because that's what it is out on Lake Ontario today, bumper boats. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. Yeah, I got one up on a high line of three color. Cool. Oh, here we go. I think we're going to get a run right now. Oh, yeah. There he goes. Yeah, I like the rigger. Look at that. <laughs> that is so cool. I like to rig our offshore boards to release, and we've talked about that in other episodes of Fishing 411. The reason for that is I can run this outside board, and that fish will release the board. I don't have to touch any of my inside lines. And this fish is on a high line here. It's a three color of leg cord. And all I heard, I was looking the other direction, all I heard was that line pop out of the cliff, and I knew that there was a fish on. I turned around, and there's a king grabbing a hold of this three color here. So this is a pretty high fish. But right now what we have is a situation where the water temperature is about 51, 52 degrees on the surface which is pretty much ideal for fish being high. And a lot of times when people think about king salmon, they think they gotta go deep, which we're fishing deeper water today, but because that surface temperature is in that 50, 52 degree range, you're gonna have fish that are literally right on the surface, no matter what depth of water that you're in. And this one was about, uh, about 12, 12 feet down over about 80 feet of water. So um, don't be afraid to put some lines high up in the water column. I think you'll be surprised how many fish you catch way up there. Now we're gonna talk a lot about leg core today because I have a feeling we're gonna catch a lot of fish on leg core. But the name of leg core is just slow and steady. I like to use reels that have a pretty high gear ratio, which means that it picks the line up pretty quick. So all I have to do is really just keep the line tight. When those fish start swimming towards you, you can pick that line up quick. But just slow and steady, you're already going about two and a half miles an hour. So you're putting a lot of pressure on these fish. If he wants to run, let him run. <laughs> and he wants to run. This isn't a big one, Dad, but a perfect example of these spring kings. I think I got him going good here. There we go, Jacob. Really nice. nice fish. Really nice fish. So that's just a perfect example of a spring king. You know, we're going to catch fish bigger than this today. We'll probably catch fish smaller than this today. Um, but I'm assuming, Dad, this one falls like a two-year-old king category, right? So in the fall, um, this fish is not going to spawn. But there's a lot of fish in Lake Ontario right now. You have big fish in the system, small fish in the system. But that is the perfect one for the grill right there. It's a beautiful king. You know, when it comes to catching salmon, our boats have a lot of important gear on them. Rod holders, electronics, GPS system, but nothing is more important than this little piece of equipment right here. It's called an X4D. It's made by Fishhawk, and what it is, it's a temperature probe that we attach to the downrigger and we put down. And what it's doing is it's giving us subsurface information. Most importantly, it's giving us our trolling speed at depth, and it's also giving us our water temperature at depth. And those two things are critical to finding salmon. We've talked numerous times about how water temperature is where these fish like to be. 
If you can find those right zones of water below the surface and you get your trolling speed perfect for the gear that you're fishing, you're going to catch lots of fish. The X4D by Fishhawk is absolutely a piece of equipment every salmon fisherman needs to own. That's a big king, Dad. It is a big king. That's why I could not gain any ground on him. <laughs> You're getting him to come the right way now, though. He's starting to pay attention a little bit now. Watch your eyes here, guys. That spoon is there's a lot of tension on that line right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's okay, Jake. Get your net untangled and we'll try again. Try to net a king over top of the uh, kicker isn't easy. There you go, nice go. job, dude. That's a big king, Dad. Look at that side of that thing. You're going to see here in a second why uh, why this fish whooped me. we got another fish going on our seven color right now. Just tearing off. So. <laughs> that is a big king. And uh, turn that spoon around there so you can see the color that he bit on. That's called something called mixed veggies. It's one of our all-time favorites here. This has worked very well over the years on Lake Ontario. And that's a Magnum Streak made by Wolverine Tackle. Oh, baby. Woo! You got two going over there now? No, this is, this is your, I figured that I'd do. Yep, and yep. I'll let you do your interview and hold your fish, <laughs> and then I come get it from you. All right, well, that sounds like a deal. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. Hey Jake Romanek here. I'm going to talk about a tool that we use every single day on the water when it comes to open water trolling and that is the Precision Trolling Data app. Now the app's been out on the market for quite some time now but we still get a ton of questions on how the app actually works so I thought what I would do is a quick video walking through exactly how to use the Precision Trolling Data app. Now I'm a walleye fisherman. I like to target a lot of different species but I probably spend most of my time walleye fishing and more primarily open water trolling for walleyes and I'm going to show you how to use the app basically from the basics. Now when you look at the app itself you'll see that there's a feet down function and there's a feet back function. So if you're marking fish on your graph, let's say you're marking them 12 feet down, now what you'll have to do is you'll go to the feet down function, scroll to 12 feet down and you have to go 89 feet back to get the lure down to that depth. Well, maybe you're not a monofilament guy. Maybe you like to fish braid. Well, we've tested it with braid as well. You can go to the line type option right on the phone, and when you open up the line type, you'll see a bunch of different options, and we'll get to that. But we'll go to the Berkeley Fireline, which is 10-4 Berkeley Fireline is what we test on. When you go to the Fireline function, you'll see that it's going to change the dive profile or the dive curve of the bait. With a thinner line, you're going to be able to get that bait deeper, and that's the beauty of braided line. Well, maybe you're not a braid guy. Maybe you want to get that lure deeper than what it actually can go on its own. Maybe you want to fish weight in front of that. You can go right back to the line types. You can open it up, and you can see that we have two different options. You can fish this bait in combination with leg core, or maybe you want to fish this combination with an offshore tackle two ounce snap weight. You can, let's go ahead and pull up the two ounce snap weight. Now what this is, is what we call the 50 plus two method. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna let the crankbait out 50 feet. You're gonna add on a two ounce snap weight and then you're going to continue letting line out. So let me show you for an example. Let's go to 1.5 miles an hour on the app. We're gonna pull it to 1.5 miles an hour and I wanna get that bait down 30 feet. So what that means when I have to get the bait 30 feet is to do that with a two ounce snap weight, I need to let that bait out 50 feet. I need to put a two ounce snap weight on the line and then I need to let out additional line. In this case, I want the line counter reading a total lead of 99 feet. So what I wanna do is I wanna put 50 feet of line out, snap weight, and then an additional 49 feet of line is going to get that bait down in that 30 foot category. Now if you love fishing crankbaits, you'll find that the Precision Trolling app 
there's hardly a crankbait on the market that we haven't tested to date. So if you're looking at becoming a better crankbait troller, you want to look for the Precision Trolling app, and using this app is going to put a lot more fish in the boat. The Niagara Bar is actually located near the town of Lewiston, New York, which is very close to Niagara Falls. The Niagara River pours into Lake Ontario at this point, and it's pouring all this nutrient-rich water into Lake Ontario. That's what concentrates the bait, and that's what also concentrates the salmon. Well, this fish came on a seven color of leg core. And if you've never fished leg core before, you know, we do seminars all over the country and it seems like we hear a lot of people that are afraid of leg core. And I'm telling you, if you want to take your fishing to the next level, leg core is how you do it. You're going to catch so many fish on this and it's such a versatile presentation where you're going to be able to use it for trout and salmon fishing, walleye fishing. Basically look at it like this. If there are suspended fish over deep water, it's pretty hard to beat leg core. And I'll tell you why. The reason why, as leg core, it takes a lot of line to get deep, and there's no stretch in leg core. So the nice thing about it is you can get your lure a long ways away from the boat, but you also don't have any stretch. So when that fish bites, it's a direct hookup, and you lose very few fish on leg core because of it. And the way leg core works is it's a weighted line. So a 10 color of leg core is 100 yards of line. When you hear us say things like a seven color, or a four color, or a five color, what that means is about every 10 yards, the color of the line changes, and that allows us to know how deep that leg core is going in the water. And anytime you fish with inline boards, your highest line is your outside board, and your deepest line is your inside board. So if I had three boards on one side of the boat, I might have a three, a five, and a seven color of leg core. That's basically covering the water column, which is another reason why leg core is so effective. But the biggest thing is the Great Lakes are cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. And so getting that lure far away from the boat and out to the side in combination with a planer board, it's very hard to beat how good leg core is. There we go. Nice fish, Dad. Oh, my goodness, Jake. Oh, Dad, look at the size of that fish. That's about, you know, I'd like to say it's about as big as they get in the springtime, but we're on Lake Ontario. We've caught much bigger kings in the spring. But I'm telling you, you travel the Great Lakes, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a king salmon. Much bigger than that one right there in the month of May. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Dioa Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. Well, we've been having some good success today on spinfish, and currently they come in two sizes. They come in the three inch version, and they come in the four inch version. There are plans in the works for other sizes, so you'll have to stay tuned on that. But uh, these are two very common sizes. They do a nice job of matching the hatch. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is when you pick the color of whatever spin fishing you wanna use, you might wanna go a step further and match the color of your lure to the color combination of your rotator. Now in this case, we're talking about a chartreuse and silver, so I'm gonna to wanna to use some silver and chartreuse on my rotator. By matching colors, what that does is it makes it a little bit easier to determine what color is actually getting the job. If you mix and match all the colors, you really can't tell for sure, is it the rotator that's working or is it the spinfish that's working? So color matching helps us figure out what color combinations work best so we can use them on other lines. So that last king came on a spoon, which is a very common technique for salmon fishing. In the size of the spoon that we use, this is a silver streak spoon that I have here, and it's called a mag spoon. And the mag size used to be super popular for salmon fishing all over the Great Lakes, um, but in most cases, the Great Lakes forage has gotten a lot smaller. If you're looking at fisheries like Lake Michigan, we tend to use a lot smaller spoons in Lake Michigan. Now this is a standard size spoon, a silver streak standard. So you can see when I hold them up next to each other, there's a pretty good size difference there. But one of the things that we found in Lake Ontario, being that this is the last lake on the chain of Great Lakes, it kind of gets filtered. All the green water comes down to Lake Ontario. Because of that, there's a lot of good bait in this system, and there's a lot of plankton in this system. When you have a lot of plankton in a fishery, like Lake Ontario, it makes the bait fish bigger. And when you have bigger bait fish, all we do as fishermen is just match the hatch. Because there's big alewives in Lake Ontario, we tend to go with a bigger size spoon. That's not to say that a smaller spoon couldn't get the job done on some days, but what we found is day in and day out, that bigger size mag spoon seems to do the trick for us. While we're fighting this fish, we've got a little time on our hands. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of the Great Lakes salmon fishery. Um, in my lifetime, the best salmon fishing in the United States has happened here in the Great Lakes. And it's happened because of fishery management. Uh, because of states getting together cooperatively and stocking salmon um, to get huge populations of fish in the Great Lakes. And Michigan got the ball rolling, they kind of got it started. But many other states have pitched in and pulled their weight here over the years. 
And 2012 was a milestone for the Great Lakes. It was the year that the state of Michigan started reducing their stocking of salmon. And the reason they did is because they were afraid they were gonna crash the forage base. There was good data that would suggest if they continued to stock heavily, they would crush the forage base, much like what happened in Lake Huron a few years earlier. So every year since 2012, the catch rate on salmon in Lake Michigan has gone down, down, down. If you don't stock them, you don't catch them. It's just that simple. And we don't have great natural reproduction of salmon in the Great Lakes. Meanwhile, Lake Ontario in New York hasn't had that kind of pressure. They haven't had to reduce stocking because they have a great forage base here. It's the last lake in the Great Lakes chain, and of course it gets all those nutrients end up here. And of course Lake Erie is close by, and Lake Erie is pouring in nutrient rich water. So Lake Ontario has benefited from all of this in that the fishing is great here. They continue to stock heavily. And as a result, a lot of people who used to fish in Lake Huron or Lake Michigan now come to Lake Ontario. And uh, it's understandable. People are going to go where they're going to catch fish. Oh, yeah, that's a big fish. He's sounding on me again. Now, if I can just get him to come back up here. I'm on, Papa. Oh, he barely fits in the net, dude. Holy cow. Look at the size of that king. You got some arms on you there, kids. That is a big king. Oh. Now there is 20 pounds of spring king. That is a gorgeous fish. Hey, my name is Mark Romanek, and you've been watching Fishing 4 on 1. If you want to get yourself some big king salmon like this, visit Lewiston, New York. Go out in the Niagara Bar, and you will have the time of your life. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, and Jay's Sporting Goods. What a beautiful king. That one ate a spoon, a mag size spoon. I'll talk more about that spoon in a second. I gotta show that fish off just long enough so you can take a look at them. What a beautiful fish.